welcome back to ACAMS TV. My name is Nicole Ackerman, and I'm pleased to be joined by Kay Chernoush, a Director of Artworks for Freedom. Kay, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having us here. Of course, of course. So my first question is, I uh, was reading your bio, a chance assignment for the U.S. State Department 2005 exposed you to the evils of human trafficking. Um, can you talk about your journey since then? Yes, I was um, doing the photography for the annual uh, TIP report, Trafficking in Persons report for the State Department in Hong Kong, Macau, Thailand, India, Italy. Mm -hmm. And I was just gripped and horrified by what I was being asked to photograph. Mm. Um, it was both sex trafficking, sex tourism, mm. uh, child labor, bonded labor, and um, abuse of domestic servitude. And mm -hmm. I couldn't believe, even though I had traveled all over the world for my professional career, mm -hmm. I couldn't believe what I was seeing and, mm -hmm. and photographing. And I was haunted by the people that I met and by the experiences and, and the things that I photographed. And I just decided that I wanted to make, use my photography in a way that would make a difference. And that's what I did. So I started working with other um, organizations, uh, nonprofit organizations um, throughout the world and um, came to develop a different way of photographing um, the subject matter mm -hmm. where it was with constructed imagery, not with, um, not with um, showing the people who were involved. Okay. I wanted to show what the experience was like from the inside. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was how I uh, came to create the Bought and Sold Voices of Human Trafficking series. Wow. And then that was exhibited uh, widely throughout the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. um, and we realized at that time that um, that work had such a powerful impact that we could bring in other artists' visions, other artists' um, creative imaginations to address the issue of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. It was at that point you decided to establish Artworks for Freedom? Or yes, that after, after that uh, work that I did in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. uh, we were in five cities and that was kind of the genesis because we realized that the work already existed, it was paid for, and we could travel it to other cities. Mm -hmm. And we saw the impact that it had um, and that's why I decided to invite other artists to join and address this issue to really to provide um, um, entry points mm -hmm. into what is a very dark subject. Mm. But we wanted to capture people um, and help them understand what human trafficking is and how they can take action, their own creative actions to end it. That's amazing. So. Can you talk a little bit about those impacts that have happened through? Well, the Artworks for, um, Artworks for Freedom has, uh, was formed in, in 2011, mm -hmm. and we've been all over the world and across the U.S. Mm -hmm. The work has been seen by millions of people. Mm -hmm. um, we do awareness campaigns um, using the Bought and Sold exhibit as a kind of a centerpiece, but then building out, um, bringing in other uh, local artists mm -hmm. and other uh, nonprofit organizations to partner with us mm -hmm. and to try and uh, raise awareness, educate people really to the fact that human trafficking is happening um, everywhere, that it's a global problem, but we have to all act locally. Right. Everyone has a part to play. Yes. So we feel that the art is very powerful um, and can elicit responses that, you know, data and statistics um, cannot, cannot get at that um, empathetic a space we need people to be in to fight this. Yes, that's amazing. So. Um, so what are some of the most challenging and rewarding aspects of your profession, specifically when you work in human trafficking? So we deal with all forms of trafficking, okay. um, sex trafficking, labor trafficking, domestic servitude, mm -hmm. debt bondage, and I would say the most rewarding thing is my own interactions with survivors mm. of trafficking. I've just been inspired by their resilience, mm -hmm. their bravery, mm -hmm. um, and, and feel really a shared uh, humanity with them. Mm -hmm. My work, in I mean, my own personal work with Bought and Sold is to really dignify the survivors and the victims, to grant them their own full 
um, human space mm -hmm. um, for, to, for, for normalcy, for them to have um, be, be seen as normal yeah. um, and as just like you and me. Yeah. That has been the most um, powerful part for me. That the the challenges are um, trying to break down silos between between different groups to get people to collaborate to get the different um, nonprofit organizations and governmental agencies and and any individuals to really collaborate and um, to make this really an all hands on deck kind of an effort. Um, everybody has a part to play, and uh, we need everyone from money laundering experts, financial experts, um, health care providers, lawyers, law enforcement, academic, uh, academics, research. Um, absolutely everyone has a part to play and we need all that creativity to combat what is a um, huge, the um, largest, largest, uh, second largest if not largest criminal enterprise in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, $150 billion a year in profits, mm -hmm. very low risks. Right. So we want to see the risks be increased mm -hmm. and the profits be diminished, if Absolutely. not abolished, if not totally ended. Yeah. Definitely. Can you speak a little bit more about the Golden Doors to Freedom, the exhibit you have going yes, on right now? Yes, that's one of our most um, popular initiatives because it's a participatory arts project. Right. And um, we take an abandoned wooden door, mm -hmm. um, in air quotes, a piece of junk. <laughs> uh, nobody wants it. Mm -hmm. And we then engage with different affinity groups. Mm -hmm. So this is creating a portal to freedom. Um, the door being emblematic of so many different possibilities. Right. Uh, opportunity knocking on this door, one door closes, another door opens, mm -hmm. and so there were endless things like that. And gold also, uh, we gild it, we gild the door uh, with partnering groups with mm -hmm. different groups like ACAMS mm -hmm. um, and we gild it with 23 karat gold leaf which is mm -hmm. precious mm -hmm. and indestructible mm -hmm. and uh, again somehow em emblematic of the journey that um, trafficking victims go through, mm -hmm. trafficking survivors go through um, to become more beautiful than the original to be um, and really to um, turn that uh, abandoned, discarded door into a work of art. Mm. It's all about transformation, yeah. reinvention, possibility. And we ask the um, participants to voice out against human trafficking by sending messages of support and encouragement and doing their own artwork or poetry or whatever on the door, writing on the door, actually writing on the door. Yeah. So the one we've created here at ACAMS is really beautiful. We're very mm -hmm. excited. Everybody has been wonderfully responsive. Mm -hmm. That's very yeah. powerful. Thank you. Do you have any other um, upcoming initiatives that you have? We do. We're very excited to be introducing a new initiative called Airports to Freedom. Oh, Airports that? are a hub, of course, of, mm -hmm. of one hub of trafficking. And we're going to be going into, um, hopefully, Atlanta with mm -hmm. a pilot project mm -hmm. to, uh, w with a big multimedia interactive video mm -hmm. um, in a special kiosk mm -hmm. um, that people can go to during their uh, wait time, their dwell time before their flights mm -hmm. um, go off, and they can learn about human trafficking. We'll have videos of 12 survivors each telling their story. We'll use, we're going to use the art of a manga comic book to attract mm -hmm. young people. It will be interactive so people will be able to um, they'll be asked where are they where are they from, mm. and th they can punch in their city or region, and um, get immediate information about the trafficking organizations in that place, about statistics and uh, just general information about trafficking in their city or in their state. Mm -hmm. And um, we're also planning a legacy uh, part of that project where once the exhibit goes away, um, 
there will be ways that people uh, w w will have downloaded information about the local uh, organizations that they can donate to, that they can provide, um, for example, beds for um, uh, victims, uh, young children, for example, who are trafficked, or other kinds of um, um, benefits for sur direct uh, service providers mm -hmm. uh, for the uh, survivors of trafficking themselves. So people, we want to connect people um, with the places where they can be, where they can take action. What a great and then idea. we'll have also an educational uh, curriculum for schools. And so we want, we hope, ch you know, school kids will be brought through age appropriate, of course, right. but um, we, we see this as, as something that could be very transformational and reach really millions and millions of people. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so smart and That's the vision. That's amazing. When do you have time to sleep? <laughs> and we need and we need funding for that. So we're all we, we, we need people to get involved and mm -hmm. take a look at it, see how they might be might be interested to mm -hmm. to participate directly as sponsors, as partners. Um, as funders. Do you have a website? So, we do. The website currently is artworksforfreedom.org. Okay. Um, and donations can be designated to the Airports to Freedom uh, campaign. Um, but we will shortly have a website for airportstofreedom.org. So, Excellent. Yes. One final question. Um, so your work has made into permanent collections in the World Bank and the UN Office on Drugs and Crime. How does it feel for you personally to have that recognition? Um, it's, it's very gratifying um, and I feel like that the more that that work can be out in the public mm -hmm. um, and, and help move people to be concerned, to, take, to inform themselves about the issue, the happier it makes me. Yes. So, and it's been really a, a great honor to have the work here at ACAMS. Um, this is a small version of this larger bought and sold exhibit which Typically, I like to, we exhibit outdoors okay. on big billboard size um, panels, mm -hmm. and um, it's, it really does draw attention. We want the work to be uh, not uh, art, you know, not just directed to art going crowd, not mm -hmm. just directed to people who are working in the human trafficking field, but we want to bring, to broaden the audience and really help people to understand that you know this this situation is uh, is everywhere around us so being outside the exhibit mimics what human trafficking is and we have to know what to look for mm -hmm. it's out right. there and it's often said that it's hidden in plain sight but it's not hidden mm -hmm. we just don't know what to look for yeah so the first thing to do for people to do is to um, inform themselves mm -hmm. to read up to share the information, mm -hmm. and then they can decide in which area they want to take action to end it. And we can end it in our lifetime. I hope so, absolutely. Hey, thank you so much for your time and all the work you do for anti-human trafficking. Thank really appreciate you. you. Thank really you. appreciate being here. Thank you so much. Aww, thank you.